Well, good afternoon. This is Pastor Joel Tetro from Southeast Valley Bible Church. And uh, we wanted to just communicate a couple of thoughts uh, concerning COVID-19. Uh, you've already heard from the elders at Southeast Valley Bible Church. We've already um, sent out an update, uh, but we're going to send up another update because uh, the reality on the ground is changing quickly. And so um, we're going to be giving you uh, some instruction and some information on how we as a church and we as the leaders at Southeast Valley Bible Church are wanting to um, take the next several steps. And this morning or this afternoon, we want to just share a few thoughts concerning uh, some of the important parts of that. I hope that you'll be with us um, by way of video link on Sunday, as we'll together as a church think even deeper about the significance of what we're going through and how we're keeping our eyes on Christ, both individually as families and as a group, of, as a family of families, as we are as a church family. Um, I just want to say a few things. It's, it's easy at a time like this to uh, have our faith challenged. It's easy to, to struggle with fear. Uh, there's a lot of unknown. I want to just remind you a couple of realities. Uh, while certain things may be unknown to us in a time like this, they're certainly not unknown to God. The Lord has a perfect plan, and he's working that plan both for our good as well as the gospel, as well as his work in the, in the world. And so we can trust that God is a good God. And um, we need to remember that... Um, even the wind and the waves obey Jesus. Mark chapter 4 tells us that uh, when there's disease, when there is um, challenges by way of natural, what's called natural disasters, um, God's in control. And God's a good God. And just because we are God's children and just because we are um, his people does not mean that we are immune from the effects of what happens in these kinds of scenarios with disease and with other um, events. Uh, as we reflect on um, the scriptures, I want to just remind us a couple of realities uh, before we talk about the general announcement that we as elders are making and pastors are giving to the congregation at large. Number one, um, the scriptures tell us that in Romans chapter 8, we're reminded that the world as God's creation is groaning. It's groaning with corruption. And just because we're God's children in the community of faith doesn't mean that we miss uh, the aftershocks of some of that groaning. It's interesting in that passage, we're even told that we ourselves individually groan. Um, number two, sometimes God uses sickness to bring salvation, growth, and even as a tool of judgment. It doesn't mean that just because you're impacted physically or financially, it doesn't mean that God is specifically judging you. It means that we live in a world full of judgment. But it's interesting. Um, it's interesting in Luke chapter 13, we read of a powerful story when Jesus alludes to a tower that had fallen and numbers of people had died, Jesus asked the rhetorical question, do those people, those people that died, was it because they were more guilty than the rest of you? And the answer is, of course not. And then Jesus makes a powerful point when he says, when, when you see these kinds of things, that we should self-evaluate our own walk and our own life and our own uh, responses to God. And so as we, um, I think that there are, uh, opportunities for all of us in a time like this. And please know that we, as the pastors of uh, the congregation, are praying for all of you. We want to give some, just some preliminary uh, thoughts, and you're going to be getting, uh, you'll have access to a letter. We're going to be giving um, some information. And uh, before, before we give that, I want to just preface that with a few more thoughts. Uh, we, of course, believe in the importance of meeting regularly. Uh, nothing has changed with our understanding of what the scriptures teach concerning regular uh, occasions of corporate ministry together. 
But we're also told to love our neighbor and have a willingness to live peaceably with all. That's including governments. And government is, uh, our government, state and national, is requesting our help as individual churches to fight the curve of the disease. And uh, with technology being what it is, we have the ability through technology to continue to assemble, uh, virtu- have virtual assembly while at the same time um, not inadvertently spreading the disease. And so uh, we're attempting to do all of that. And so as a result, uh, there's really four parts to this announcement. Number one, there'll be no worship service in person uh, this coming Sunday. At 1045 in the morning, uh, our morning service will be available and you'll get some instructions on how you can access that. Number two, there'll be no Sunday school classes this Sunday. Um, we are looking at, uh, looking at the possibility of having Sunday school classes uh, in the coming weeks. And so in the next week or so, we'll look at how that can happen. So we're suggesting as pastors that you use this time, uh, use it for family time, uh, prayer, uh, Bible study. Uh, you might even consider uh, reaching out to another brother or sister, perhaps in your small group, perhaps in your community. And so you can have a group together and we would encourage you to do that before the 1045 uh, service. Uh, then starting uh, today, small groups may be split up into smaller groups. We're asking that our ministries um, um, follow the recommendation of uh, 10 people or less. And so we're encouraging you to, again, reach out to other people in the church, other people in your small group, and uh, look for opportunities and you might even reach out to the leaders of your small groups and leaders. We're hoping that you'll use, uh, you'll be creative and looking for ways uh, to encourage your group to reach out to one another. I, we also want to encourage uh, you to consider that during this time of crisis, um, it's going to be important that we minister one to one another, that we reach out to those that may have special needs. So just remember in the church family, as well as people that are not necessarily in our church. But uh, for those that are in our church family, if you can reach out to senior saints, as well as families with small children, um, just offer your help. Uh, Some of them could use encouragement. They could use perhaps uh, some groceries. And so anything you can do to help them will be a, a tremendous blessing. And then lastly, let's remember that small businesses, no doubt, will be taking a hit. And so if you yourself as a family are feeling uh, the financial impact of that and you have real need. We want to know that. And so please contact us. And for the rest of us who are able to continue to give faithfully, we just ask that you continue to to give faithfully with your gifts and offerings to the congregation. You can give online. You can continue to mail your gifts in. And so uh, if if you can help us in that way, uh, that'll be a blessing. And lastly, we would ask as uh, the pastor team that you would pray for us. We would encourage those of you that can do it, uh, you might even set your alarm for noon each day. You might pray for us. We, we, need, we covet your prayers. We're very thankful. Uh, we had a great meeting this morning. God's given us tremendous unity. And uh, we have a real clarity on some of the next steps. And so we're looking forward to sharing with you that in the days to come. I want to conclude our time with just a couple of verses. Uh, this coming Sunday, we'll be starting uh, 1 John chapter 4. And we'll probably not get this far in the passage but in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, John says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because we fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And so for those of us that love God, those of us that share the love of God, those of us that walk with God, uh, we, don't need to fe- we don't need to live in fear. And then lastly, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 7 Humble yourself, therefore, under the God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety or all your care on him because he cares for you. God bless you, and we'll look forward to talking to you soon.